Major earthquake rocks New Zealand over the weekend. Welcome to Skywatch TV for Tuesday, November 15th, 2016. I'm Derek Gilbert. A magnitude 7.8 quake hit the South Island of New Zealand uh, very early Saturday morning local time. Uh, more than 1,600 aftershocks. Two people confirmed dead, possibly $2 billion in damage. The uh, town of Kaikoura on the coast of uh, New Zealand, on the South Island, has been cut off from the rest of the country by landslides. So far, more than 100,000 landslides reported around the country. And uh, again, uh, just devastation all across the South Island. Uh, first quake hitting about 57 miles north northeast of the city of Christchurch, which you may remember was badly damaged by a major quake just a few years ago. Now, if you're a follower of... Um, the ministry of Chuck Mister and Koinonia House, and we know that many of you are, uh, you are aware that Koinonia House has a facility in New Zealand that is the River Lodge. And so yesterday we got in touch with Koinonia House and Koinonia Institute CEO and COO Ron Matson. Ron, thanks for taking time out of your schedule to join us today. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you, Derek. It's... Um, well, I understand you've got a lot going on there at Koinonia House or the River Lodge, uh, so I'm not going to take too much of your time today. We, of course, were concerned, as I'm sure many of our viewers were, being familiar with Koinonia House and the work of Chuck Missler through the years, uh, wondering how close the River Lodge was to the quake. Well, we're fortunate in that, in one sense, we're in the middle of the North Island. Um, I like to quip that, uh, uh, of course, we expect things to move around here. We're part of the uh, Pacific uh, Ring of Fire, mm -hmm. and uh, so there's lots of geothermal activity around us. It's the nature of, of living on a coral atoll or, a, or a, a, a volcanic plateau. It turns out that the activity was in the northern part of the North Island is where the real destruction took place. Hmm. Uh, they're not unfamiliar with that. Back in 2011, of course, they had the uh, uh, huge devastating earthquake down in Christchurch, which even today when you go to tri Christchurch, you can see the, the, the very infrastructure the city was, uh, it's like looking at a patient that's gone through a back-breaking uh, experience. Uh, the roads are still uh, crushed. Many of the, the uh, water and sewage is still broken even now. Mm. Uh, they've repaired the essentials, but there's certain areas they call the red zones, which they can't even build on again. So the very nature of living in this kind of uh, area is, is instability. The part of the North Island where we live, I like to uh, remind people that we probably won't experience earthquakes here because we are in the middle uh, of what's called the Reparoa Calandria. Now, what that means is in the North Island, it was formed by two super volcanoes. One, when it completed its job, um, it collapsed and became Lake Taupo. Lake Taupo is a lake large enough to fit the whole of Singapore inside of. It's a huge, one of the largest lakes in the Southern Hemisphere. Hmm. Uh, just north of that is uh, this area called Reparoa, which is, again, another super volcano. Um, and we live right in the middle of it. So we like to to um, uh, make people get nervous and say we live at ground zero. So we'll not experience an earthquake. If it ever goes up here, we'll just be vaporized. <laughs> <laughs> Now, just to clarify, so, you're, you're we're, the... we're, we're OK. I mean, you know, you, you get some shake and rattle. Um, uh, you you can put an app on your phone called GeoWatch. And uh, the, it's not uncommon to have 10 to 15 earthquakes a day somewhere in New Zealand. Wow. It's constantly shaking all the time. It's just the nature of the place. Wow. Now, just to clarify, you're in the North Island and uh, Christchurch is on the South Island. And the quake that Correct. Hit, uh, over the weekend was also on the South Island? Where's say that again? The quake over the weekend was also on the South Island? Yeah, it was okay. in the northern part of the South Island. They did okay. feel quite a shake in Wellington, which is the capital, which is uh, on the southern part of the North Island. Uh, the, the, there was there was some uh, uh, minor damage there, but but it's never it's never fun to be shaken around. We've certainly had those um, you know those times when uh, the the pots and pans begin to rattle. Uh, from the kitchen, and uh, you know that something's going on. Um, but, you know, I, I lived 12 years in Southern California, okay. and uh, it wasn't that unusual. We have more earthquakes here, but it's not that unusual to, to feel the earth moving underneath you. So, well, no, I, um, at all in all, the, the ministry's fine. We're carrying on. And uh, so, from that perspective, we're in good shape. No, I'm born and raised in Illinois, so I felt two in my entire life. And one was, I. <laughs> we, we had a fellow at... Uh, 
that I worked with back uh, during this second quake uh, when I was in central Indiana, who had uh, formerly been an offensive lineman in college, went about 6'7", 315 wow. was his playing weight. And uh, we thought it was just Kimball going for coffee, but uh, it turned out, no way, he's not even <laughs> there in the you building. Go. So, there you go, uh, exactly. Well, uh, you, you just had one of the uh, annual events of the fall that, that a lot of our viewers look forward to is the Strategic yes. Perspectives Conference up there at Coeur d'Alene. And you had quite a lineup there this year. Of course, Dr. Chuck Missler, uh, most of all, but uh, Bill Federer, Paul McGuire, Bob Cornuk, Joel Richardson, Joseph Ferrer, L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas, and on and on. Uh, Dr. Steve Elwert from Koinonia Institute, and of course yourself. Um, yes. Now, uh, will these be available for people who weren't able to attend the conference, uh, either streaming video Certainly. or DVD? Or... In fact, it's available now. They can either buy uh, uh, posthumously a, a streaming pass, which allows them to get access to the raw video on demand for uh, uh, for a year. Um, but we'll also be coming out with the both DVD and the video on demand package that will come out um, in just a few weeks in December. That, so all the sessions will come out. But yes, we had a remarkable time, uh, very diverse um, yeah. um, uh, group of speakers. Um, the, the objective of that conference really is uh, is to present different perspectives. We even had two speakers that were back to back who presented two different opinions on the same issue. And, yeah. and, and uh, the audience was like, oh, what's happening? And we're saying, this is, we're trying to create Bereans here, uh, not little uh, you know, puppets that uh, can only think of one thing. So right. uh, of course, we also had Dr. Peter Flint there. He's a, a world, uh, uh, one of the world uh, most for, uh, foremost uh, uh, translators of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm -hmm. And we had, um, He's one of uh, was one of uh, only uh, 70 guys in the world that, that have access to the Dead Sea Scrolls. And of course, uh, he died last week. Uh, he came oh, to the conference. Uh, he had a he had a, uh, an episode um, on the Friday night. We sent him to the hospital. He came back. He seemed perfectly fine. Uh, uh, rejoiced to be with us. In fact, did a, a, a lunchtime Q&A session. Um, he was on the cruise with us on Sunday as we cruised around Lake uh, uh, Coeur d'Alene. Uh, went home with his wife, um, immediately fell ill, took him to the hospital, and um, the note from his wife simply said that um, Peter was kneeling beside his bed praying, and the Lord just took him. So uh, very rapid. It was a shock. Uh, we feel honored that the material that uh, that he shared with us, which was some uh, some insights on some um, uh, parallel referenced. Uh, uh, Dead Sea Scrolls that make a lot of references to the works of Daniel. So, hmm. at any rate, uh, he was there. We had a, a great, um, a great group of guys, and the material certainly was wide and varied. Uh, and, I, and I think, all in all, it was a good conference. Well, one of the things that uh, I've appreciated about uh, uh, Chuck Missler's work through the years and the work of Koinonia Institute is encouraging believers to think which is one of the commands that Jesus gave us, to love the Lord our God with all of our hearts, souls, and minds. And uh, engaging that third part of that, uh, that command is often the most difficult for us. Um, I appreciated uh, in the, the speakers list, the founder and executive director of the Bible Museum, opening next year in Washington, D.C., if I remember correctly, Dr. Scott, yes. Scott Carroll. And yeah, Scott Carroll was, was really kind of a... Uh, he was sort of a hidden gem, I think. Uh, he works very closely with Josh McDowell. We actually got in contact with him through uh, Bob Cornuke, mm -hmm. and uh, and he actually brought um, uh, quite a few um, uh, scrolls and uh, papyra. He's one of the largest private collectors um, of these uh, types of um, of ancient instruments around, and it was fascinating to see the process that they go through as they will um, uh, uh, discover um, things, especially uh, mummies, apparently. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the wrapping around mummies are the disused scrolls. Right. And uh, because they're, they're long pieces of papyra, and uh, so they would just simply, you know, as it were, uh, make paper, paper mache out of it. And these guys have the, the uh, uh, capacity to be able to unravel that uh, and they made some very uh, interesting discoveries as to uh, these uh, fragments. But uh, uh, he brought a, a, a between he and uh, Peter Flint, they they brought a real uh, insight into that detective work behind the scene uh, with regards to ancient manuscripts. And that's an area that I find fascinating. I've been doing a lot of reading lately on uh, ancient cosmology of the uh, the Sumerians, the 
uh, Akkadians, the Amorites, the Arameans, the Canaanites, and, and finding that um, the historians and the archaeologists know a lot more than we ever find out or learn about when we're sitting in the pews. And it's stuff that I think helps flesh out the narrative of the spiritual war that's been taking place since the Garden of Eden. And Yes, uh, so, absolutely. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, and, and, uh, uh, we're, we're, you know, people, if they listen to, to, uh, sort of the pop culture response to Christianity, it's, oh, you listen to something that was invented in the 12th century right. and there's no credibility for the historical Jesus or, or the biblical narrative of the old Testament was something that was derived by Christians and all this nonsense and the, the wealth of evidence back when Josh McDowell, uh, did his evidence that demands a verdict, verdict way back in the early 70s. You know, we would all quote uh, this statement that said, of all the ancient, ancient uh, manuscripts, the, the Bible has um, uh, up to 25,000 fragments uh, that they can use to reconstruct. And that was in the 70s. That number now is well over 40,000 mm -hmm. uh, fragments uh, that's just bringing more and more credibility to the text that you and I rely on, which... You know, we can appreciate the Holy Spirit is going to preserve the message, which is his responsibility to propagate throughout the age of man. So he's not going to let some uh, uh, dictator or uh, some uh, effort to eradicate that uh, be something that hides the truth from us. It's just a matter of us being diligent. And guys like uh, Scott Carroll and uh, Peter Flint and others are really have devoted their lives to that. I'm glad they do, because it's it's like all detective work. Um, it's it's only glorious when you find something fantastic. The rest of the time is just hard graft, you know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you really got that sense that there's a lot of wading through a lot of ancient stuff that are just grocery lists and and to do lists and and so on and so forth. But you got to treat every one of them with the same respect until you come across those uh, precious passages which uh, which fit uh, like a puzzle piece mm -hmm. uh, into the whole biblical narrative. So. It was, great. it was great having that kind of insight from uh, uh, Dr. Scott Carroll. And again, now people who would be interested in getting the streaming package or the DVDs of the presentations from the just completed uh, Strategic Perspectives Conference, where would they find that? They can simply just go to K House, the letter K followed by house.org. There they'll see where the store is. And uh, they just follow, the, follow it down in the store. The, uh, by December 1st, uh, that will all be available for them to be able to purchase and take a look at or or go to uh, uh, our streaming sites. But it, that's the primary place, I think, to make it simple. Okay. And, and just for my own curiosity now, where do people go online to find the video updates that you produce there at uh, K-House? We do those weekly, um, and in fact, two places. One is we, we obviously have a YouTube channel called Koinonia House. You just type in Koinonia House, uh, and we do Q&As. We're always, myself and Chuck are always surprised uh, how many people uh, dial in for that each week. Uh, we also um, utilize Facebook Live a lot. Hmm. Um, and that, if you're a, a Facebook person, just, again, type in Koinonia House. Um, like the site, and anything we post will be will be posted to you. Uh, we have a Twitter account and all those standard sort of things that, of course, uh, um, you need a 12-year-old to help help you figure out yeah, how to use yeah. them. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless, <laughs> Uh, uh, we have, we live in such a wonderful world now of, of the distribution of media, uh, so rapidly to people, uh, through Skywatch and, and people such as yourself being able to instantly get in contact with thousands of people, especially in this age of deceit yeah. that we live in, whereby, I mean, the past election in the United States really should underscore just how misrepresented the, the, the sentiment of the U.S. was uh, to where it caught everyone by surprise. But had they been listening to the heartbeat of, of America, mm -hmm. they would have understood what was coming. But they didn't. Why? Because they'd rather listen to Beyonce yeah. and share and, uh, and, 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 and really um, and, and, and all the media right across the board. They all sort of drunk from that polluted cistern. And um, I'm, I'm glad for the effort of, of you and, and Tom and the ministry that you have there in terms of uh, the diligence you have of, of the daily broadcast. I think this is a great site and a great opportunity to get people connected with what the real information is. Well, it's been a blessing to use the secular broadcasting experience I developed back in the day when I was uh, promoting 
the lifestyle of uh, Beyonce and Madonna and so forth. Uh, <laughs> at least now I can use it in, in the right way. Um, and, and as a compliment to you, I think one of the most enjoyable videos uh, and programs I've watched in the last year was watching you and Chuck deconstruct the Mandela effect. <laughs> Boy, did we ever get a lot of heat because of that. Yeah, I, we took it sort of as a, as a, it, because we did it in three installments. The first I just asked him uh, without any preparation and he just scoffed and man, we got hate mail like you can't believe, but yeah, that was yeah. sort of intentional to be perfectly honest. Then the second thing I thought, okay, we need to at least address this because it, people are so needlessly concerned about this. Right. So we address it a second time. And again, that that didn't stop anything. And so the third time I thought, okay, then I will take a few more minutes, go into this, unpack this a little bit, and uh, do a bit of teaching and to show people there's there's nothing there's nothing to be concerned about here. In fact, right. this is an example of end times deception. Uh, if Satan can get us to to question, hath God said? It's one of the three things he constantly does right. in terms of deception, starting from the Garden of Eden, and uh, so. Uh, uh, and I even toyed with the idea of, of making uh, that um, as a as a part of an element of what I was going to present at the conference, but then decided not. I thought, you know, I'm giving this too much credibility here. Uh, I'm going to deal in my session with the uh, the deception that Jesus talks about, which is the most um, uh, oft-mentioned deception of the end times, is the mis misrepresentation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That it'll be a, the, the, more than any other prophetic pointer, uh, the, the world will be continually presenting and, uh, and twisting information with regard to Jesus Christ so that nobody knows who this real character is. And of course, there's no other name given among men by which we must be saved. So Amen. of course, that would be the, uh, the, the target of Satan. But at any rate, Mandela Fett was fun in one sense, but sad in another, right. in that so many people are so gullible to get drawn into um, an idea that somehow time travel would allow them to go back and and change the King James version of the Bible. Right. Uh, and why? To to what end? Exactly. You know, if you're going to go back in time, I mean, uh, um, if you're going to go back in time, bet on the Cubs. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. Because you know, I've done that every Cubs to win the World Series, right? I've I mean, done that, that every year since 1969. So at uh, at some point, statistics say you're going to finally get it right. Uh, yes, exactly. No, right. But I, I know exactly what you're saying. I, I I did one program on it myself, and uh, for that, somebody actually took the video of that program and put it up on their channel. But they superimposed a six 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 on my forehead. <laughs> Defending the Bible got me labeled an antichrist. Is it, it's astonishing. Right. Well, Ron, well, we shouldn't be surprised. No, no, you're right. We appreciate your work, and we're glad to hear all is well there. We're praying for the uh, continued success and, and work of the uh, the Institute, uh, the River Lodge there. I know there's a lot going on. I'll let you get back to it. Ron Matson, CEO and COO of Koinonia House and Koinonia Institute. Thanks for your time. God bless you. Coming up, a lawmaker in Iowa tells protesters to the Trump election to suck it up, buttercup. That's next on Skywatch TV. The technology that's changing the modern military is changing the very definition of what it means to be human. Skywatch TV is proud to offer the important new book from Lieutenant Colonel Bob McGinnis, Future War, Super Soldiers, Terminators, Cyberspace, and the National Security Strategy for 21st Century Combat. Order Future War from the Skywatch TV store and you'll also get Never Submit by Lieutenant Colonel Bob McGinnis. The Blood on the Altar audio presentation, The Coming War Between Christian versus Christian featuring Tom Horn and Steve Quayle. What You Don't Know Will Kill You, Genetics, GMOs, and the Plan to Eradicate Humankind, a special investigative report from Tom Horn and the Skywatch TV team. And a two-year subscription to Skywatch TV magazine. This is a value of more than $125, yours for just $24.95. Order now by calling toll-free 844-750-4985 or log on to skywatchtvstore.com. Something dark is happening beneath Switzerland. And we're not talking just about the uh, CERN Large Hadron Collider, also talking about the pagan ritual that accompanied the opening of the Gothard Base Tunnel underneath the Alps. Tom Horn and Josh Peck, this week's guest on Skywatch TV, discussing the brand new book, Abaddon Ascending, for a complete listing of dates and times where you can watch the program. Log on to skywatchtv.com and then check the link in the top menu bar that says 
channels. Uh, a lawmaker in Iowa is a bit tired of the protests from um, those who are just convinced that Donald Trump will not be their president. But not just the protests, some of the uh, counseling that has been required, apparently, by those who are so distraught by the election of Donald Trump that they find it difficult to cope. Specifically, five state universities, taxpayer-funded institutions of higher learning in Iowa that have allocated taxpayer dollars to bring in special counselors, grief counselors, to help students deal with this. Lawmakers proposing a bill in the Iowa legislature called the Suck It Up Buttercup Bill, in which he says they will investigate how taxpayer money is being spent above and beyond the counselors that are already available to students, and then revise the 2017 budgets for those institutions by double the amount spent on these unnecessary, <laughs> the unnecessary counseling. We, we see stories like this, and we see stories about, uh, for, for example, in the city of Portland, Oregon, um, caught on video, protesters throwing bricks at the truck of a Trump supporter, chasing it down the street for eight blocks, all the while screaming, peaceful protest, peaceful protest, while throwing bricks. High school students, or teenagers anyway, uh, running through a mall in Portland, causing damage, apparently in protest to Donald Trump. One fails to see the connection between property damage and the uh, recent presidential election. But it is easy for adults, mature adults, to see this and get really, really angry. And that is the goal of the enemy. And by the enemy, I don't mean people who voted the opposite color. I mean the principalities and powers that the Apostle Paul warned us about. The principalities, powers, rulers of spiritual darkness against whom we contend. The human actors, most of them, are unknowing dupes, participants in their game without even realizing it. Should we be angry against them? A at them? It's a natural reaction. But Jesus told us to love our enemies, as difficult as that is. But as we read in Scripture, even the pagans, even the evil, love their friends. So what credit is it to us if we only love our friends? This is the difficult challenge for us as Christians. How do we respond in love? I'm not saying I've got the answer to that because certainly my first reaction is to uh, respond angrily, but that becomes an obstacle to them hearing what we have to say. And perhaps one more word. You, you may remember I talked about this uh, a couple of times over the past year. Last year at about this time, the... Uh, President of Oklahoma Wesleyan University posted an essay to the college's website about an encounter he had with a student after a recent chapel session in which a student approached him and said that the uh, sermon, which was on 1 Corinthians 13, you know the passage, love is kind, love, basically explaining what love is. I don't have it top of mind at the moment, but you hear it at almost every wedding. Um, and the student was complaining because that particular passage made him feel bad, like he wasn't somehow living up to this ideal. But the whole point of the gospel is to make us feel bad about our natural tendencies to hate one another, to be selfish, to look out for our own interests to the exclusion of everyone else. That is our default setting as humans. That's why it's only by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, that we are saved. Because it takes a supernatural effort to overcome those tendencies. So um, we as Christians, by definition, are going to have to feel bad. Convicted is the word we use in Christianese. Convicted of our sins before we can repent of them and ask God's forgiveness. And let's hope that uh, we as parents are not so protective of our children, so coddling our children that they grow up to be like these special snowflakes who need safe space because the other candidate won the election. And I say that without any malice or anger, but with concern. 
because those students who are so traumatized at the result of a presidential election, frankly, are unprepared for real life. If they respond this way to Donald Trump being elected, how will they respond the first time a supervisor in the workplace says, this effort isn't good enough. You need to do it again. You need to do it differently. And you need to do it on my timetable. We should pray for them because <laughs> they're being turned out into the world completely unprepared for the pressures of life. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV.